How's it going guys? Welcome back to Dad Bod Operator. The old saying goes, you get what you pay for, right? Well, not always because like your sister on dollar day, some things are just not worth the money. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a couple of rifles that some of you guys in the comments have deemed to be overrated. The LWRC ICA5 and the SIG MCX Virtus. I'm going to do a quick top to bottom breakdown kind of like your sister, of these two rifles. And at the end, in the comments below, put your choice for which one you think is just completely not worth the money. Stick around to the end and I'll tell you my thoughts too. Let's do it. Man, I am coming hard with the sister jokes today. <laughs> kind of like I was with your sister. <laughs> Up first, the LWRC ICA5, chambered in 5.56 at about $2,800 plus tax tag and title. Could it be considered overrated? Let's find out. 16 inch cold hammer forged nitrided barrel with a one to seven twist. Beautiful spiral fluting that goes all the way down the barrel here as we remove the top cover of that removable rail to show the spiral fluting and the short stroke piston operating system within. You can see adjustable gas block here on your short stroke piston operating system. That fluting, however, does three different things. Number one, it looks pretty cool. Number two, it saves a bunch of weight. And number three, each and every one of those little divots there gives additional surface area for heat to escape, therefore pretty much acting as, an, as a heat sink. So form really meeting functionality on this guy. And that is a serious benefit to this rifle. And part of the reason you can see the cost that they have with them as well, as I struggle mightily to put the rail back on the top there, my critiques begin with the rail. Proprietary rail on here, so anything that you're gonna put on there is gonna have to be bought from LWRC. And another side note, this is their high-end top-of-the-line rifle. They also make a DI, so direct impingement rifle, that is about half the cost, right around 1500, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. There may be a little more now. But the nice thing about that is on that rifle, all of these come with it. The rail scales, your hand stop, your little knockoff AFG there, and the rail scales on that side as well. Pictini doesn't come with it, but I mean, you know, so be it. On their double the price piston operating system one, guess what? None of that comes with it. So that means you're in for another hundred or so dollars when it's all said and done just to get all of this on there. And then if you want the Pictini rail as well, that's an additional, I think 32, 33 bucks. So another $150 just to get yours to look like the one that costs half the price. Not a fan of that. The proprietary part alone is kind of unsatisfactory, but when you couple the fact that you don't even get a lot of the cool stuff that comes with their literally half the price rifle, it becomes a little infuriating. The other thing too is without this little additional QD cup that was purchased from LWRC, by the way, where would you put a QD sling attachment? You see one? Because I don't. That means, guess what? You got to buy that little guy too at about twice the price of what you would get one from Magpul. Now, a buddy of mine pointed out the other day that on the AFG, there is a little hole in the back there. And I never knew this until now, but that is actually a QD cup for a sling. I don't like the placement of that. It would kind of angle your sling at a weird angle. But I mean, at least if you get the DI version, you have a place to put your sling. And if you don't, then you got to spend all that extra money. Oh, well, thanks LWRC. Now, Pictini rail running all the way across the top and they do throw in some of the nicest backup iron sights on the market. You can see some little holes up there at the top to help vent the gases that come from that short stroke piston operating system. Monolithic rail, or excuse me, upper that comes all the way out here to the front to help really reinforce that area to help with the accuracy and give it a little bit more stability as well. It's got a really nice mounting system all the way around. So that top, that front rail is just not going anywhere. So again, engineering wise, I'm really in line with their vision on this for the LWRC. 7075 T6 aluminum upper and lower on here, fully ambi. So, I mean, you know, kind of hard to call something overrated that is fully ambi because when I got this a couple of years back, full ambi was just not much of a thing. Not many places were doing it, but you can see 
mag release and bolt catch and release on this side, both catch and release, which again, fully ambi. On this side, you got your bolt catch and release, mag release, ambi safety selector as well is nice and tactile. So again, added benefit to them there and ambi charging handle as well. The furniture that comes on it is good. I didn't replace it. I mean, I do like the, the grip on this, but not necessarily the grip angle. Also on the inside, they give you some really nice little spots there that's kind of reminiscent of a B5 systems. As you can see here, got a spot for a C, CR123A battery, your front sight adjustment tool, and then another little screwdriver there for whatever optics you might need to pop off and on there too. So again, LWRC, some pretty decent forward thinking, and they also give you a nice little kind of sop mod-ish due to the cheap rod, cheek, excuse me, cheek riser on there, but it's little bitty. It's about four inches long. You guys know about that. Pretty easy to measure, huh? But it does have a QD cup in there as well. And I didn't see any reason to switch any of that out because it, it came with it and it was it was fine. No problem there. Got an 8 point T2 sitting on top but for the purposes of this video, it's not really relevant. Nickel boron bolt carrier group in there that all you really have to do is wipe down anytime you use it. So the thing that got me was the trigger. Again, 2,800 bucks for a top of the line LWRC rifle and it comes with a mil spec trigger. Now it was kind of a polished nickel. So four mil spec triggers, it was decent. It really wasn't bad. But because of that, I had to throw in a Geisley SD3G trigger there using some snap caps here, guys. So taking a look at the trigger again, it's not the, the stock one. So you have to bear with me, but it is a definite upgrade. It's a single stage, about five pounds, and you know exactly when that's gonna go. So a great trigger is now in there, but wasn't to begin with. QD cups here, QD cups there, QD cups everywhere, except for in the front where they should have been when you got it. Let's talk about fit and finish. Overall fit and finish is phenomenal on this. I mean, some of the best Cerakote I have ever seen on a, on a firearm. They really knock it out of the park on that one but most places do that these days too. So at $2,800, what makes it worth that kind of money? And in my mind, the only thing that really gets it there is the shooting experience. You would think that a short stroke piston operating system would be kind of jumpy, not very accurate, but this is one of the softest shooting and more accurate piston rifles that I have. Now, is it up there with the Knights in terms of recoil impulse and whatnot? Absolutely not, because it is a short stroke piston operating system and physics is a thing. But despite that, they have found a way to overcome some of the shortcomings that are usually inherent in a short stroke piston operating system to give you a really nice soft shooting rifle with a great recoil impulse. But at, <laughs> call it three, probably $3,200 now all in, is it worth that money? Man, it is hard to say. <laughs> and that is why in a lot of instances, you hear people say that the LWRCs are just, they're overrated. Let's take a look at his competition. This is probably not a competition that any rifle wants to be in, the most overrated, but here we are. SIG MCX Virtus, chambered in 5.56. Again, when these things came out, man, has had tons of problems and SIG loves to beta test on their customers. So there were issues that abounded when they first came out, but this is a, a, a later generation. So not really many of those issues to report. Actually, I've had no problems with it at all. 16 inch cold hammer forged barrel on here. I think it's chrome lined. I couldn't find any information on that, but kind of a pencil barrel in here by comparison to some of the other barrels on the market to help save some of the weight that is offset by this massive 15 inch handguard on here. And it is just a chunk that could be used as a weapon if needed be, <laughs> if you ran out of ammo. Three prong flash hider sitting up top came with it. So, you know, better than a standard A2 flash hider for sure. Price on this one was I think 23, 24 when I got it. So they're steadily going up. And the quality's not exactly going up with it, so that's why this is in the video for the most overrated. Short stroke piston operating system, adjustable gas block, which, which can easily be adjusted right here through that gargantuan handguard up top. It is, however, M-lock, so you do have M-lock slots at three, six, and nine. Pictini rail up top with lots of lightning cuts in here, but it doesn't help much because it's still quite a weighty rifle. 
you know me and QD cups, and on this guy, you got a couple on the front there, so hard to call that part overrated. Lots of space to mount things, so hard to call that part overrated as well. I believe it's 7075 T6 aluminum upper and lower on this here. You do have a monolithic upper that comes all the way out to right here. So that is why I have my EOTech EXPS3 mounted all the way out here. I'm waiting for the uh, that eye relief though comments to come through. The reason that is mounted all the way at the top, just kind of as a sidebar, all the way out to the front there is because you do have unlimited eye relief with an EOTech. And because of that, you get better situational awareness with it being a little bit further forward. So go ahead and bring your comments to me. Let me know why it's too far forward if you think that I am wrong. I welcome conversations on this channel. 7075 T6 aluminum upper and lower on here. A really interesting uh, spring system in here, I guess is the best way to put it, because it doesn't use a standard buffer tube. It does have a couple of springs up here in the top that does help return the bolt home. And if I were to take it apart on YouTube, I'd probably get a strike. So we're not gonna do that today. But just know that it is not a buffer tube standard piston system. You are, and because of that, you are able to fold up your stock there and still have this fire while folded. So benefits abound with this, but the lower on this is partially ambi. So you do have ambi safety selector on here, ambi mag release, bolt catch and release on this side. And then on this side, you do have your standard mag release and a little bit shorter safety selector on there as well. You can see here, some of your pieces are not like the others. And that is because a lot of your steel pieces on here that can wear over time are easily replaced. And so good thought by SIG on that too. Again, QD cups on here for mounting of your QD, sl uh, QD slings and as well on there too. The furniture that came with it was fine. Uh, no issues with that. Overall fit and finish is great. That gray color on here that they have is phenomenal. One of my favorite colors in a rifle. The thing that really is hard to kind of get past is the weight on it. It's about eight pounds as currently constituted. So kind of hard to wrap your head around carrying that around all day, but the shooting capability of it is phenomenal. It is a little, the recoil impulse is a little more than the LWRC, I'm not gonna lie but it's kind of hard to feel it with the additional weight that is sitting behind it. So all in all, fit and finish is great. Shooting experience is great as well, but 2,400 bucks guys for a rifle. And you tell me is fit and finish and a decent, decent shooting experience worth it? Really hard to say, but that's the video guys. All in all, between the LWRC ICA5 and the SIG MCX Virtus, which one's just not worth the cash? My choice, believe it or not, is the SIG MCX Virtus. I can justify spending a few hundred extra dollars for the LWRC just from the shooting experience and the knowledge that the engineering that has come from this is top notch. I've never heard anybody saying that their LWRC was beta tested on them. And so it's hard for me to say that a rifle that's a few hundred more dollars expensive than the SIG MCX Virtus is not worth it just because the functionality is there, the fit and finish is there, and all in all, it's a phenomenal rifle. What are your thoughts, guys? Put your choice in the comments below. I love having conversations with you guys about this, even the ones of you who are wrong. You know, you still have an opinion. You're entitled to it. To all of my long-term subscribers and viewers, thank you guys so much for being a part of the Dad Bod Squad. For my first-time viewers and hopefully new subscribers, we thank you guys so much for being a part of the Dad Bod Squad. Come check us out on Instagram at the Real Dad, Oper Dad Bod Operator. Let me try that again. At the Real Dad Bod Operator, we do uh, some pretty cool stuff over there, so it's worth checking out, giving us a follow on that side. Beers in the fridge. We'll see you next time.